Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today is the day we are doing a very, as, I mean, as strict, as harsh, as cutthroat of a declutter as I can of my eyeshadow palette collection. If you missed my announcement video, I'll put it up in the cards, but I will be moving soon and this is the first time I'll be moving my eyeshadow palette collection and here, as you can see, I've got a whole bookshelf of eyeshadow palettes and I really don't need all of these. I know there's plenty that I like, I'm waiting to declutter, I cannot wait to declutter, but on top of that, I want to be more strict, a little bit more harsh with myself about this declutter because I'm going to be moving into a new space, it's going to be a smaller space, uh, it's going to be a shared space, so I need to be a bit harsh with myself. So that is what this declutter is going to be. Like I showed before, this is a bookshelf with all of my eyeshadow palettes, except for the ones I've already chosen that I'm not going to declutter. Those are in my December Everyday Makeup Basket. If you missed that video, I'll put it up in the cards. But for now, we are going to start with shelf number one. All right, so looking at shelf number one, I have my first two Pan That Palette successes. I am going to put these to the side because I love keeping these palettes just on display. Those are, of course, not going anywhere. This NYX Ultimate palette, I hated this palette. It really wasn't that great. I'm, that can go immediately. What did this powder? Oh, no. Okay, so I depotted a bit of this shade from the Pac-Man palette, and it made a mess. Lovely. Okay, so I am gonna clean that up, but do I want to keep this MAC and Pac-Man? Or not MAC, <laughs> this Wet n Wild and Pac-Man palette? <sighs> At least for now, yes. If anything, it might be in a maybe pile. Um, this is the only sugar pill palette I own, so I'm going to be keeping that one. Let's scoot everything that way. This Wander, Wanderous Fling palette. It's a really pretty neutral palette, but I have plenty of neutral pretty palettes. This is also in a maybe side. Um, I really like affordable Wet n Wild palettes, but these I have to be strict with. So let's see. This one is supposed to be a dupe for a Natasha Denona palette that I don't have, so I'll keep that one. This is a dupe for a palette I do have, but that can get decluttered. Um, I do not have many blue or green shades in my collection, which is going to be a lie, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. But affordable blue or green, so I'm going to keep this one because it is a really good palette. Uh, this one can go. So we're going to declutter these two Wet n Wild palettes. And I'm going to keep, of course, my Charlotte Tilbury palette. Oh, made a mess there. Charlotte Tilbury is staying. Let's go on with Huda. So I've got the nude light palette that I love. We're going to keep that. I love the mauve and the smoky obsessions. These are not Huda. Do we have any other Huda palettes? I think that's it. Okay, so we're going to keep those. These are my favorite, like, quads. These are from Midas. These are the, uh green tea macchiato and then we have the pumpkin spice latte which is just gorgeous absolutely stunning stunning so i'm gonna keep those you know what this mac semi-sweet times nine i got this because i was like everyone who uses mac loves mac and this and this and this and it's Honestly, I have to say, it's not that good. Their shadows are not that good. So I think I'm finally going to declare this palette. Moving on to the Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows. Oh, honestly, these were not good. These were not good. Uh, they got to be decluttered. Ooh, okay, doing good. So we've got all the ones I'm keeping. I'm just going to pile in this corner as we move forward. So let's see, the Maybelline City Mini palettes, these are actually some really good palettes, and I used to have all, like, all of them, and I really narrowed it down to just keeping a few, and I really do like these. I have Rooftop Bronzes, which is this one, I have Urban Jungle, which is the green one, and then I have Matte About Town, which is the all matte one. Honestly, I think these are good quality and enough worth to keep. 
Next, I have this collab palette, which was starring in my last HP Project Pan. I'll have it up in the cards if you missed it, but I do have Pan in a lot of these shades, and it really was a good palette. So I'm going to hold on to this one. I really loved this palette, and I didn't think I was going to like it as much, um, but this is the uh, Melt Millennials Pinks palette, and it actually featured in my last favorites video from Mr. I'll put it up in the cards, but this is... A surprisingly multitasking palette and I really do like it so I'm gonna keep this one all right so next we have some Natasha Denona mini palettes I've got the mini this is the palette five. Oh nope <laughs> this is the palette number two it's five and they're really pretty shadow so I do want to keep that one and then I have the mini uh, gold palette which is so stunning look at that I just have to keep that one. <laughs> and then you know what? Same for the e.l.f. palettes. I decluttered a lot of e.l.f. palettes in the past, so these are the two that I'm left with. This is the Rose Gold Sunset palette, which is just fall in a palette. It's beautiful. And I could say quite the same for my next palette, which is the Mad for Matte 2. Again, fall on a palette. It's, it's beautiful, it's stunning, and I have to keep it, so we're going to keep those two. This is the Kylie uh, Calm Before the Storm palette, and I really love, this is one of my favorite pastel palettes ever, and I can't get rid of it, so I have to keep that one. Now this one, despite being a ColourPop Z palette, I actually depotted the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Alien palette into here, and I am not using the shadows, I've not once reached for these shadows since I depotted them, I gotta be honest, and I'm trying to declutter everything Jeffree Star by next year so I'm not using these I'm not gonna use them I'm gonna declutter them and I want to go ahead and say that I did have the blue blood palette in this collection but I just decluttered it to a, a cousin of mine who is gonna use it she loves blues I wasn't using blues that often so um, I'm glad to have it out of my collection and giving it to somebody who's actually going to be using it so this is a palette that I bought a while ago and then Hold on a minute. All right, so um, I'm gonna have to pause right here because my family is in an urgent uh, present wrapping issue and I'm gonna go help. So pause, we'll be right back. So this Pat McGrath palette, this is my first Pat McGrath palette and to be honest, I was a bit underwhelmed by the shades. I mean, they're really pretty, especially like the shimmers, but like these two mattes, they're pretty underperforming. And when you have a tiny palette of only six shades, if two of them aren't really that great, like, yikes. <laughs> Quite yikes. But I'm going to hold on to this. Uh, if anything, I've seen videos of people depotting these palettes, so I might depot these. Because honestly, the packaging isn't so much looks as it is annoying. But I'm going to hold on to this palette. This is the newer palette to my collection. This is the Pure Defense palette, and it's actually really pretty. Hello, you can see me back there. I got this in my last Try Beauty box, and I like the fact that I can have a smoky look. I can have a warm look over here. The shades are really smooth and buttery, so I do want to hold on to this palette. All right, so this is actually a palette of singles from Shop Miss A. I have to admit, the eyeshadows from Shop Miss A are not the best. I love so many products from Shop Miss A, but their eyeshadows are just unfortunately not it. So since this is actually a very functional oh there it goes empty palette i'm gonna just get rid of the singles and keep the empty palette for use okay i think we're gonna do color pop all at once so i'm gonna separate out all of the color pop palettes which are over there all right so this is the midas cosmetics lemonade palette which is like one of my favorite yellow palettes ever and i have to admit I like this better than the Aha uh -huh Honey, so I'm probably going to declutter that one and just keep the Midas palette. Uh, a couple more Kylie palettes that I actually really like are these two. So this is the Blue Honey palette, which was actually one of the first ever tutorials I ever did on my channel. And I just, I love this palette. It's colorful, but not boring. And also, it's, I like it. I just really like it. So I'm going to keep this. And then we have the Halloween palette, which I believe is from 2018. And this is one of the most unique palettes I own. I love this palette and I'm definitely going to hold on to it. This Milani Bold Obsessions is one of the best drugstore palettes, also drugstore neutral palettes ever. Like you have a neutral smoky palette, a smoky smoky palette, and then a warm smoky palette all right here. And then you have this huge mirror. 
I love this palette so much, so I have to keep it. All right, so this KVD Vegan Beauty was the anniversary palette from a few years ago that I bought back before I understood how shitty of a person KVD was. Uh, so I decluttered it and then I brought it back into my collection after the company, after her shares in the company were sold. And I thought about panning this, but it's not my pan that palette. <laughs> but I do want to bring this back into my collection and really work on it. Like the shadows are good quality. I like the colors. So I want to get my use out of this kind of the same I did with my pan that palette for 2020. So I'm going to hold on to this one. All right, so all we have left in this top shelf are the ColourPop palettes. All right, so first things first, these two I have to keep. This is my favorite palettes from ColourPop ever. This is the Good Sport palette, which was a limited edition palette, but it's like the perfect fall palette ever. I love it, cannot get rid of it. And of course, this is their first palette they ever released. This is the Yes Please palette, which was a dupe for the Sunset palette from Natasha Denona, and it's... It's gorgeous. The formula is fantastic. It's the first palette, so I'm never going to get rid of this unless I pan it, ever. So, we have these palettes left. I definitely want to keep the Sailor Moon palette. I love this palette, and I love Sailor Moon, so I'm going to hold on to this one. So these, I have the colors left. So we have the Blue Moon, Just My Luck, the Orangey Glad, the Uh -huh Honey, and the Blowin' Smoke. So I just think I have enough yellows in my collection to warrant get ridding, like getting rid of this yellow palette. So I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm going to keep the rest of these, because these are quite stunning. This Blue Moon one, I actually decluttered a while ago, but I brought back in after I realized I wanted to declutter all my Jeffree Star products. So this Blue Moon is stunning. I'm going to keep that one. I'm also going to keep this Just My Luck palette. I've been using this a lot, actually, pretty recently. Some beautiful green shades. I love the Orangey Glad palette. These are some bright orange shades that you really don't see in a lot of eyeshadow palettes. And of course, the Blow and Smoke, which is a beautiful, cool toned, smoky, dark palette. And I love this palette. So that's everything for this top row. Let me go ahead and bring everything back. Okay, so that's everything we have left for the first shelf. All right, so our second shelf has quite a few more palettes. So let's start from the left side. These are all my Juvia's Place palettes. I really like this one. This is the Queen palette, and I use the purple in my Pen That Palette face palette, but I do like these other shades. So I'm gonna hold on to this palette. Oh, the Nomad palette is one of my favorites. I love this palette, so we're gonna keep this one. The Warrior is honestly, like, I had to repress a lot of these because they broke in shipping, and it's just really fragile. And I think I have other neutral palettes I like better, so I'm gonna declutter the Warrior. Ooh, the Tribe palette. I <laughs> love this palette. I'm not getting rid of this one. I love the shades. I'm getting super subculture vibes, and I love this. This is the Warrior 3 palette, which is really bright and beautiful, and I have not used it really enough. So I want to keep it and, like, make a vow to, like, reach for this more often because it's a gorgeous palette. We have the Warrior 2 palette next, and this one is actually a bit more unique to me because these aren't just neutral mattes. These are, like, neutral mattes with depth, and these aren't really shades I see in other palettes, so I want to keep this one. And this one, so this is the Deuce palette, and this one is just beautiful. It's unique, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I want to hold on to this one. All right, so this one's a newer palette to my collection. This is the Avocado Toast palette from BH Cosmetics, and I love it, so I'm going to keep it. This is a palette I got from Lunatic Cosmetic Labs. It's the Elvira palette, and just how stunning is this palette. I love this palette, and I'm going to keep it. To be honest, I think this is one I'm ready to let go of. This is from Bad Habit, which is a brand that doesn't really exist anymore. And this is the Artistry palette, which was to dupe, I believe, the ABH and Mario palette. 
like am i using this no is anyone looking for dupes of this palette any like now no so i i'm gonna declutter this one i'm gonna do these as a group because i know i'm not gonna get rid of any of these and i love these these are my lorac pro palettes i have the one two and three palette number one is one of my og favorites it's one of the first high-end palettes i bought it's one of the only palettes i bring with me when i travel which of course i have not traveled for the past year but i love it and i'm keeping it the Lorac Pro 2 is the cool toned version, which is stunning. And of course, I also love it, keeping it. And the 3 is the warm toned version. Beautiful. A little bit more beat up because I've used it a little bit more, but a beautiful. So this is a palette from Alter Ego. This was sent to me in PR, and I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think Bad Habit rebranded to Alter Ego, but I can't really prove that. And this is a dupe of an ABH palette. And I have to admit, I actually like this palette a lot. It is a good dupe for the ABH palette, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. This is another Bad Habit palette, but I think I'm gonna hold on to this one because this is the best dupe for the Subculture palette that I have. And I panned the entire Subculture palette. I actually have the empty version. Let me pull it over right here. This is my empty Subculture from ABH. I panned the whole thing in my 2019 Pan That Palette. If you missed that, I'll throw the whole playlist up in the cards. But it was such a unique color story, and if I ever wanted to do a specific look, I liked having this dupe around to do that. So I'm gonna keep this one. Next, we have the Rustic Glam Palette from Dominique Cosmetics, and I'm actually pretty impressed with how different this palette was. I like the formula, but it takes a little bit to build up. I'm not reaching for it as much though. So if anything, this is going to be on the chopping block because I feel like I'm not utilizing it as much as I should for this. So this is on thin ice. Despite the fact that Too Faced is a trash brand, there are two palettes that I actually really like. One more than the other. Uh, my favorite is the Sweet Peach palette and you can tell because it's speed up and I have panned in several palettes. I am not going to get rid of this Too Faced palette because I love it even though the owner is a shit face um <laughs> this is the chocolate bonbons palette which i wanted for so long i lost it after this palette and i finally found it at like tj maxx and i got it on sale so i'm gonna hold on to it and actually try to get my use out of it all right here in the middle we've got natasha palettes which you know what i'm gonna be honest i'm not getting rid of them because they were so expensive i have the metropolis palette um, and most of these I rearranged, so they might not look the same that they would if you bought them brand new. But this is the Metropolis palette. This is the Sunset palette. And this is the Green-Brown palette. This palette from Urban Decay, I just recently did a palette resurrection on. And I really do like the shades in here. Even though it's a pain in the ass to store. Like, having it be circle is a pain in the ass. But I do like these shades, so I'm going to keep it. This Pixie palette should have been pulled for my Pixie video, which I have not filmed yet, so I'm going to pull this for that video. Next, we have this palette from one of my last Tri Beauty boxes, and this is from Nomad, and this is a Lake Como palette. It's a stunning blue-green palette. I love this, so I'm going to keep this one. I have to admit, so this Essence Crystal Iced palette really did not blow my socks off, so I'm going to declutter this one. Oh, this is one of my favorite neutral palettes ever. This is pure. This is the so Soiree. Soiree. I don't know why that word is so tough for me as a native English speaker. The Soiree Dyer. Soir soiree. Hey. Anyway, uh, I love this neutral palette. They're beautiful. They're stunning. I, whenever I use this palette, I have an amazing eye look, and I want to keep it forever. <laughs> oh, this one, Blush Tribe. Wait, this is Blush. Yep, this is Blush Tribe, which no longer exists. Do I want to keep this palette, even though the brand no longer exists? Hmm. I, I think I'm going to put this in my cell palette. I do have a... Um, a uh, stock of like makeup that either hasn't been used or is powder and lightly used that I'm gonna sell. I think I'm gonna sell this one because the brand no longer exists. So yeah. Next, this is technically there. I mean, they're a bunch of singles, but they're a palette together. And look how pretty that is. Oh my god. Anyway, um, this is from Davina, and this was the collab with Angelica Nikvist, and this is her palette. I love these shades. I love this palette, and I'm never gonna get rid of it. So. 
Another Alter Ego palette. This is a dupe for a Natasha palette that I don't have. This is the gold palette. So I'm going to hold on to this one. This actually felt like an upgrade from their other palettes. This feels luxe. It has a big size mirror and the shades are actually really nice. You can see I've beat this palette up a little bit because it's actually really nice. So I'm going to keep this one. So this Glam Light palette, I'm pretty sure I got in a, a subscription box and honestly... <sighs> It doesn't stand out in my collection. It's not much to write home about. So I'm going to declutter this one. All right. So this is a bunch of MAC singles. This is sentimental to me because this was a palette that my boyfriend and I, we went into a MAC store together and I had him help me pick out a palette. And so this is what we made. It was way too much money for what it's worth because honestly, these shades are really not that great. I can find better shades probably from the drugstore. But this has sentimental meaning to me. So I'm going to keep it because romance because romance this is my last balm palette i'm pretty sure and this is the meat matrimony i love the, i just love the idea behind these palettes and i love how you know unique this matte palette is and i love the matte black i love all the shades i have to keep this forever last but oh my god certainly not least we have one of my favorite makeup brands ever and this is makeup a murder this is the crime scene trace evidence volume one palette this is their colorful look how pretty that is i love this palette to death i should have panned this palette but i'm not but i love this palette and i cannot wait until like i'm in a place where i can afford to buy the rest of their palettes because they're gorgeous i love this whole brand everything about it um so yes keeping this all right and that is everything we have left for the second shelf hello and welcome to the bottom shelf here we are. This technically isn't all eyeshadow, like these are all my brushes, so we're going to move that to the side. And then we have quite a few palettes that are like single shadows that we're not going to go through. So let's just start. So this ColourPop palette right here, this is actually an empty palette. It's messy. Excuse me, I need to clean it. These are my empty palettes. I've got one right here. And then I've got some that should have some single shadows in them. Yes, like, oh, that blue shadow you see it's like right up here oh <laughs> well i just had a blue shadow break but i've got single shadows here can i coax this blue shadow back into the pan maybe oh it broke it broke so that's what's left of that blue shadow right there but i'm gonna just put this away so i'm gonna have a different video hopefully coming up next that is gonna be all of my single shadows and like um, single depotted shadows, single individual shadows, everything. So that's where all of those will show up, including all of these. So I want to put those to the side just for now. So let's start with this Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. It's actually a stunning palette. <sighs> I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it with the other Too Faced palettes. All right, moving on. So this is the Rose Period palette from Suva Beauty. This is also from a Tri Beauty box, but this is actually, like, beautiful. This, to me, is kind of like the ABH uh, Modern Renaissance, but it has a little bit more depth. So I'm going to keep this. This is another palette from a Tri Beauty box that I want to keep. This is the L Rock Pro Chocolate Box. It just has some depth and dimension, and I love the two big highlighters in the middle. So I'm going to keep this. These are two Profusion palettes. I'm pretty sure I decluttered one, but I really never tested these. So I brought it back in and I really wanted to like, give them a good try. So this is the Wanderlust palette. How pretty is that? I don't know how I feel about the brush, but we're going to keep it. <laughs> and then this is the Temptress palette. Let me open it up. How beautiful is that? A super, super, super guilty pleasure of mine is the Jaclyn Hill, the original Jaclyn Hill palette from Morphe. I love this palette so much. I cannot really express how much I love this palette. Um, I hate it, kind of, <laughs> but I have to keep it. I really love it. This Wet n Wild palette, it's really big, but I actually really like this palette. It's got a wide variety, not only in, like, shade colors, but in shades that are, like, shimmers versus neutrals so i'm gonna keep this palette and it also has the added bonus of not being directly correlated to james charles which i always love 
All right, so let's go through all my ABH palettes. Uh, I have the original Norvina palette. Remember when we only thought Norvina was going to come out with one palette, right, guys? Ha, ha, ha. This one, it's actually very pretty, so I'm going to keep that. I have the Soft Glam palette that I also love. This has been duped by many other shit companies, but, like, it's gorgeous, and I love it. And I love the ABH, the original ABH formula. I've heard they've been, you know straying from it recently but the original formula is amazing next we have the riviera palette which is one of their most colorful palettes and is stunning so again gonna keep it another beautiful and stunning palette is the Alyssa edwards palette i used most of the black to make a franken shadow but these are beautiful colors keeping it and last but not least, we have Sultry. This is a palette that I, like, talked shit about, and then I saw it in store, and I wanted it, and then I got it, and I loved it so much. I especially love this shade right here, Cyborg. It's so pretty, but I love this palette, so keeping it. Here we have another Midas palette. This is a Flower Balm. This is the old packaging, but I love how colorful this is. I personally am not a huge fan of the pressed glitters. I can only really use them in certain ways, but it's a beautiful palette, so I'm going to keep it. Here is one of my favorite Kylie palettes ever. This is the Peach Extended palette. I did a whole video about the Battle of the Peach palettes, and I'll link that if you missed it, but I love this palette so much because I love a good orange-based peach shadow, which sounds very specific, but I love it, so we're going to keep it. Next, we have this Ace Beauté palette, which I believe is my only Ace Beauté. And this is the Oceanic palette, and how pretty are these blues and greens? I have to keep this. Keeping this. Let's talk about my big BH Cosmetics palettes, because I'm not getting rid of any of them. This is the Crystal Zodiac palette. That is my newest one, but it's beautiful, and I'm keeping it. This is the original Zodiac palette that I love to pieces and I will fight people on. I love this palette so much. We're going to keep this one. And arguably my least favorite of the bunch, this is the Zodiac Love Signs palette, which isn't as good as the other two, but it's still arguably like a lot better than a lot of other palettes that I've tried. So I want to keep it. So now I have three Shop Miss A eyeshadow palettes, and two of them are absolute trash that I want to get rid of. This is the Self Made palette, which is just really not good. I tried so many shades in here, and it just was trash, so I'm going to get rid of this one. This is the Violets Are Blue palette, which again is pretty trash, so I want to get rid of this one. The only Shop Miss A palette that I liked was this Over the Rainbow palette, and to be honest, I've got rainbow palettes. <sighs> And they're better, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Like I said, I love Shop Miss A for so many things, but eyeshadow is just unfortunately not one of them. This is actually an indie brand that I supported on Kickstarter. This is from UKMA, and this is the Unfiltered palette. And it's a really pretty palette, and I want to work more with it. So I'm going to hold on to this. Moving on to the only Naked palette I have. This is the Naked 2 palette, and I love these shades. This is, I think, one of my oldest palettes. I had this, I believe, since 2015. Can you believe that? Since 2015? Whew. But I love this palette, and I'm going to hold on to it and probably keep it until the day I die. <laughs> Next, I have two Lunatic Cosmetic Labs palettes. I have the Descended palette, which is a neutral palette from them, and this is beautiful. Look at that. A neutral palette. Ah, stunning. Keeping it. This one's a little bit not as... I mean, the shades are a little bit not as unique, but the packaging is enough to keep it. So, like, it's a heart, human heart, and then you open it, boom. Really pretty shades, and then you've got a mirror on this side. So, the packaging would be enough for me to keep it. But I actually really like the shades, even though you can really only get one or two looks out of it, but I'm going to keep it. And last, and I think unfortunately least, I have this e.l.f. palette, and it really just isn't, just isn't inspiring me. I don't want it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Alright, so this is the finale, everything that I'm keeping in my eyeshadow palette collection. I will, of course, be moving soon, so I really don't know if I'm going to keep my palettes in this kind of bookshelf setting or if I'm going to get another Alex drawers and really reorganize them that way. But thank you so much for watching Declutter Week. I think we got rid of a good 
third of my palette, which is a huge thing for me. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below how you're feeling about Declutter Week so far, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.